In order to be able to now execute programs from here to run our NS3 simulations from within an uh, Eclipse instead of going to the, you know, edit, use this for editing and then go to the command prompt to run it, we can configure NS3 to work with our projects, our NS3 configuration. And um, we do this by right clicking on this project we created earlier because now you know we have the syntax highlighting, everything's done. We imported some code here. All right, we go to C++ build here and we un uncheck use default build command and the build command will be changed to point to the WAF tool. So this is, we could just use an absolute path here or we could just use this uh, Eclipse variable so that it doesn't become too long. The build directory, I chose to put it here under NS 3.26 build. I could I could put it really anywhere. So I mean, if this is automatically, uh, I mean, I could put it in another directory if I want. But this is where the, my build our build files are, you know, executables and everything. So it will put it under directories and everything. Similarly, we'll go to the behavior, and these are this is what happened when we click build. Uh, it will call WAF because that's what we set it to and followed by whatever we have here. So I chose nothing because that's how I build my my project. And uh, over here, the clean, so WAF clean, what happened when I do clean the project. We apply this and we do okay. Second thing we need to do is ex uh, configure an external tool. So I already have an, uh, an external tool configured here. Let me change it to something meaningful, WAF. And um, let me let me show that configuration. So subdirectory, and it will run it. We'll show the output. Let's see how this happened. Uh, over here, we point the location to the WAF tool for this. Uh, for we'll give the link. So of course, we can just browse the workspace and click and go here, and then just pick WAF. And similarly, here we pick the directory work directory. We add command line argument here, dash dash run, and then this is basically to prompt me for uh, string input. Uh, so it's, it's basically a uh, Eclipse way of doing it. Did I crash? No, it didn't crash. So string, so this is it. When we pick the parameters like that, it will do it for me within curly braces and when I run it will run it will ask me this is the string prompt I could choose scratch simulator instead scratch simulator enter and that will run scratch simulator those programs are under here under the scratch so this is the scratch simulator I can, and I can run subdire, which basically outputs hello. And I have an example here, another example. So I can write example and it will run this code here. Notice that we need to write example, not second. So uh, let's run this again and write example. E-X-A-M-P-L-E. -E. And uh, this is the example run. We can add more argument. We could change the arguments here for the tool. For example, if I'm just running the same program over and over, tired of typing or pressing enter, I could just write the name of the program here. Or I can dash dash viz here. Now I am invoking the visualization tool for whatever project I'm running. So let me run this again with example. And that will trigger the visualization tool for Python. Additionally, you notice here that packet files are created. These are with this second uh, example. So simulate, when I simulate, it will show some data passing through and information here. Notice that the build directory here, in the build directory, under scratch, we have example here. So the executable is actually named after the directory and there are object files after the names of the C++ C++ files. They have to have the extension CC, not CPP or C++, and uh, CC. And uh, that uh, basically is the object file, and this is the executable. 
that's why we use the directory name like the subdire thing. Uh, it's a scratch simulator file within subdirectory, and uh, this is the uh, executable. And um, will not I discourage putting things in the uh, in the right under scratch? Let's have a directory there. So if I want to have another project or if I want to work with a new example, I could just do new folder. Let's call it A1, like the stake. And um, let's pick an example from NS3. So we have plenty of example. Let's choose routing. And let's choose global routing, dynamic global routing. We'll just copy this here. And uh, we'll copy it to A1, right? Mm, paste. Now we can run. As you can see here, it's compiling my project A1 and I will choose A1 to run. It will run it with visualization. And uh, I might need to install some some things, some modules for NS3, but this is basically a routing project example showing me how packets are routed within a network. This is a PyVis visualizer. I mean, we could show packet information and stuff like that here. If they're shown, they're logged. But uh, show interface statistics, interface statistics for all the interfaces that it has. Show IP4 routing table. So this is helpful you know, for analysis. And uh, yeah, I don't think we have any event going on anymore. But uh, we usually have things here, but I think we don't have, we don't have it set up right. Or the project wasn't made to show these. Okay, and that's that. So this is how you get up and running with NS3. Thank you.